The Great Emu War of 1932 is a little known war in which the Australian army fought 20,000 emus and lost. Today, we welcome our friends Jamie and Ryan from the podcast Stories, the True and the Fictional, who share the details of this military operation with us. And Jamie also tells us about his new book, Letters from the Emu War, which he wrote from the perspective of the winners on this episode of Technically a Conversation. Just a quick note, super friends, before we get started, this is the first part of the show we did with the podcast Stories, the true and the fictional. We'll be releasing the second part next week, but if you don't want to wait, head on over to their podcast and you can listen to the full show unedited. Link will be in our show notes as well as a link to purchase Jamie's book. Thank you for listening and we hope that you enjoy the show. Greetings, you're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by both Elena and Isela. How are you ladies doing today? Awesome. Especially great with some other people. That's right, because we're joined today by Jamie and Ryan from the podcast Stories, the True and the Fictional. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Please tell us a little bit about your podcast. Oh, putting on the spot. Like, we had to talk about this, didn't we? Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, we, like, like you said, we have a podcast called Stories, the True and the Fictional. We, we started out much like you guys, sharing interesting topics, going through articles and funny stories from the past, stuff like that. And then we kind of evolved into interviewing authors. I, I'm an author myself. And kind of when I started writing, I was like, hey, there should be more platforms out there for people to share their work and stuff like that. Uh, and then after that, we evolved into just talking random pop culture stuff. We kind of like, well, stories covers everything and anything. So we kind of just free for all it now. Um, yeah, it's definitely a very interesting podcast. Every time that I listen to it, I always find myself laughing so much <laughs> at some of the crazy stuff you guys come up with. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've enjoyed it a lot. It's uh, mostly all just done on the spot. We, we get to like the recording day. I'm like, what are we talking about? I don't know. Just wing, wing it. And then it's like two hours later. <laughs> You know, I'm having to cut out all this stuff and I'm, you know. We, we always manage to weave in uh, references to Henry Cavill. Um, he's, he's, yeah. a, he's a favourite He's a favorite of ours. Yeah. And um, and Chris's obsession with, um, what, what's that actress's name, Jamie? Cat Graham. Cat Graham, yeah. Our other, our other t- team member, Chris, has an unhealthy obsession with Cat Graham, <laughs> as I would say. Um, you know, you might you might actually see him one day over there in the States being arrested by some federal police for stalking of Cat Graham, but until then we'll keep using him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely heard that when you guys were talking about how the love babies would look between uh, yeah. Cat Graham and Henry Cavill. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Henry Cavill is my favorite Superman, so yeah, I was on board with that. I love Henry Cavill. Without a doubt. It's such a shame that we um you know, we got a little bit of a tease of him coming back in Black Adam and then he's just <laughs> gone again, unfortunately. But um, you know, we're gonna get some good Henry Cavill Warhammer, so I'm still on board. Yeah, looking forward to that. I'm not familiar with that video game, but I'm looking forward to you know, pretty much seeing anything that he does. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The ladies too. <laughs> We don't care what he's in. <laughs> right? Exactly. He could just stare at a camera and like talk about his groceries. I'm like, oh my God, that was riveting. <laughs> the, the first time we talked True. about Henry Cavill and Crack Graham together, we were trying to think of uh, stories that hadn't been done before. Like there's only seven stories you can tell. And then Chris came up with this idea of them playing chess. <laughs> in a room you know and it's just like no, nothing's really happening like no one wins no one loses it's just <laughs> endless chess but it was it was still the best thing i'd read all year <laughs> <laughs> well we're very grateful and very happy to have you on our show yes very thanks for having us thanks for having us i understand you all are going to share a story with us uh quite an unusual story oh yes <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to it since you told me. I've been looking forward to hearing <laughs> this story. I haven't researched it or anything. I know Elena and Isela are excited to hear about it also. Awesome. For sure. Yes. 
I've only seen the art yeah. and I was already like, oh, no, I think I I dove a little too much. Once I saw the cover <laughs> art and the, I was like, what is happening? I have so many questions. So I'm excited about hearing this. That's an actual portrait from a, no, it's not. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Before we dive into that quickly, I just wanted to, because you guys have had your 100th episode. Or you have recently? Yes. Yeah, so congratulations on... We just want to say congratulations on that. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. And and also, I just wanted to say, the last episode I listened to, I think you've put me off cornflakes for life. I'm just going to say that. Um. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Same. Same. You're welcome. Yeah. That was very scary for me, too, because I've just come out of hospital, and that's all I had for breakfast for oh, two yeah. months with cornflakes. So, yeah, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. It was great. Yeah, excellent. You're very very welcome for that. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Didn't you see me enjoying it? <laughs> the question was, did it do what was intended and it lowered your libido in any way? <laughs> in the hospital, I'm sure it did. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, I've heard Henry Cavill is the antidote to that, though, but I'm just saying. Oh, okay. oh, that's not a problem. For sure. He would definitely help. Yeah. Both sexes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay. Now, let's get the laughing going. We're going to tell you about a historical event that really happened in Australia about just under, under 100 years ago, 1932, called the Great Emu War, where the Australian government declared war on emus and lost. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> actually happened. <laughs> So we'll just we'll, we'll quickly run you run you through everything that happened and feel free to laugh anytime you yeah. <laughs> as much as because it it is very surprising how many Australians don't know about this like they just don't know oh. like the government's like don't talk about it don't talk about it don't talk about it I thought you were gonna say it's it's amazing how many emus don't know about this oh no. <laughs> <laughs> They they know about it and and you can you can read more about it in my book Letters from the Emu War which is <laughs> they know about it and they cite it <laughs> yes <laughs> I love the pinup model of the <laughs> emu pinup model <laughs> uh, yeah if you guys head over to stories underscore podcast you can find all the artwork on on our page it's very funny it was very funny but um I'll get to that a little bit later if we want to plug my book a bit more but no no for sure. And we'll also include a link to that in our show notes as well. Oh, awesome. awesome. Now to the topic at hand. Okay, so um, <laughs> this, is, this is just a quick overall of everything that happened. Um, so in 1932, a severe drought caused 20,000 emus to migrate toward the west coast of Australia in search of food and water. The land they stumbled into was given by the government to a large number of World War uh, I veterans for the purpose of growing crops of wheat and barley. With the onset of the Great Depression, these farmers were encouraged to increase the size of their crops. Enter the emus. <laughs> they ravaged the crops, just just, uh, just utterly destroyed these crops. Now, to give you an idea on the decimation, the average emu eats up to one and two pounds of food a day and drinks up to 18 litres of water a day. Oh. Similar to my diet. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, imagine 20,000 Jose's just... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and what's your favorite food, Jose? Um, probably tacos. Okay. I don't know if you all are familiar with tacos over there in Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are? Okay. It is my favorite food. My wife makes the, my, my wife makes the most amazing tacos. It's not funny. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, Jose. I'm with you. Awesome. So imagine 10,000 Ryans and 10,000 Jose's, they wander into yep. a taco field. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, bye-byes. I'm imagining it now. <laughs> nice. Maybe I'll put that in the second book. Oh, you can eat tacos. That sounds like heaven. Yeah. Yep. I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the, the farmers relayed their concerns to the government and war was officially declared on the emus. And, uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. And, they, like, they wore medals and, you know, it's like a proper... War and um, wait, the emus wore medals. No, just kidding. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> they probably have their they probably have their own ranking. I think they have their own <laughs> ranking system. I think you know yeah. it, it, the 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 the, high, the ones that fought in the war got higher breeding rights or something like that, so they could continue the lineage. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, sure. I'm picturing an emu looking like a uh, Gaddafi with all those medals on him. <laughs> <laughs> giving some kind of like a, uh, a gladiator speech yeah. right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes 
So Major, Major GPW Meredith was put in charge um, of, um, you know, killing the emus, or trying to kill the emus. Um, so, Ryan, do you want to tell them about the attempt, first attempt? Oh, yeah, the, the uh, <laughs> this is where it starts to get really embarrassing. Um, so after some delay <laughs> due to a fair bit of bad weather, um, uh, Major Meredith and a few of the men travelled to Campion with two Lewis machine guns. The local settlers attempted to herd 50 emus into an ambush, but the emus broke off into smaller groups and the guns were ineffective due to range. So basically these guys have got some of the biggest and best machine guns of the era and they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing when it came to trying to wipe out the enemy, which are birds, flightless birds. Um, so clearly the emus saw this coming and they have arranged, you know, tactical manoeuvres. They probably, you know, started reading the, you know, I think it was a bit early for Winston Churchill or maybe right around that time, but, you know, they started researching their tactics and, and they were able to pass away from, well, like pass along from those machine guns. So the Meredith then tried on November 4th, uh, he established an ambush near a local dam because obviously, as we mentioned, the emus love their water and uh, more than a thousand emus were spotted coming towards them. The gunners waited until their targets were in close proximity and opened fire only to have their gun jammed after a dozen emus were killed. <laughs> so now the, the, now these emus have, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Professor Xavier mental prowess. They jammed the guns with their heads after a few of them went down. So not only are you fighting emos, emus, you're fighting telepathic emus now. So, you know. Awesome. They're, they're, doing, they're doing pretty pretty impressive. I think we should – I'm a firm believer that this practice should be reinvigorated and the emus should be outfitted for war. It should, if, if war should come again, if, if it should reach Australian shores again, and I think we've, we've got a good battalion. But, um, but, yeah, Jamie, why don't you keep going with the, with the attempt number one? Yeah, so by the fourth day of the campaign, army observers noted that each small group of emus had a leader, a six-foot black-plumed bird that kept watch as the others went about ravaging. Nice. <laughs> and this is where it goes to the next level of hilariousness. At one point, Meredith went so far as to mount one of the guns on a truck, <laughs> and it was proven ineffective as the truck kept bouncing and it wasn't uh, able to match the speed of the emus and they couldn't get it, get any oh. shots off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, um how <laughs> How fast do they go? Or how how slow is that truck going? They're fast. <laughs> well, if you're keeping track, that's now four failed attempts by the Australian <laughs> yeah. army yeah. on flightless birds. Four failed attempts. There's no need for super yeah. soldiers anymore. It's just <laughs> get the emus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. They should have brought Henry Cavill out so that, that way he could <laughs> laser eye them all. <laughs> so after two and a half thousand rounds and only a small numbers of birds killed, the army withdrew. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. The first attempt was deemed a failure and Major Meredith was he was quoted to say, if we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds it would face any army in the world they can face machine guns with the invulnerability of tanks they are like zulus who even dum dum bullets could not stop wow <laughs> that's a direct quote yep. <gasps> wow that's insane yeah definitely and, and we do want to stress that this is real we're not <laughs> making this up it is actually real this is because uh, when i first when i first met jamie probably long long many 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 years ago and started hanging out and he explained me about this emu war. I'd never heard of it. I was one of those Australians who was <laughs> oblivious to the fact that we had super soldier birds back in the 1800s. And um, I couldn't believe it. I said, you, there's no way you, you're making this up. Is this something you want to, like a, something you want to, you know, pitch as a movie or TV show? And then he actually showed me the factual <laughs> documentation and uh, I could not believe it. I was never more ashamed to be an Australian yeah. in my entire life yeah. once I found out about all this. So, okay, gosh. so there was a there was a second attempt. There was a second attempt. Yep. <laughs> because as you can imagine, the emus kept destroying the crops and all that stuff, and the farmers said, "Please help us." So by the <laughs> by November twelfth, the Minister of Defence, yeah, he, he agreed to um, send more um, soldiers to. Kill the birds, essentially. So this, the second attempt began on November 13th and 
This time, the military found a small degree of success with roughly 40 emus killed. Uh, by the 2nd of December, the soldiers were killing about 100 a week. Meredith was recalled on December 10th. His report claimed that 986 kills with 9,860 rounds. Oh, my gosh. So that's a rate of exactly 10, 10 rounds per confirmed kill. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awful. <laughs> so these birds were taking 10 bullets before they dropped. Jeez. Yeah, they were very. I'm imagining like the Neo Matrix style of emus. Well, essentially, you had you had to headshot them. Yeah. Oh, so they're like zombies. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Jose. <laughs> Emu zombies. <laughs> they were doing the Axel Rose. That's where I think the emu soldiers might fall victim now because back then, obviously, we didn't have video games. So we weren't, you know, we didn't have an army of experts like myself who can headshot. <laughs> All the time. See, now if the emus came back, they could just get some of people like myself out there and we'd be like, yeah, confirm, bang, 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 bang. But back in the 1800s, they didn't have those kind of experts. There was no call of duty. There was no... There was no training. Exactly. Exactly. But, oh, seriously. (laughs) I had no idea how powerful these birds were. (laughs) Me neither. And I can imagine in the 1800s, the bullets were probably really expensive also. Yeah. So it probably cost more in spent bullets than the crops that they were probably eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, that's 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 the, that's the realization of government there. You know, they could probably just set up a reserve or something for the emus with some feed that probably would have cost less than this war altogether. But there you go. Yeah, right. Lure them out. Lure them out somewhere else. <laughs> At the risk of being hunted down by my own government, we, we are, our government's been pretty incompetent <laughs> since the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just, uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like you all's government is way more competent than ours. And you guys had the <laughs> pandemic nailed pretty much like right away. Oh, we were so jealous. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's easy when you're an island. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But um, oh, seriously, it's, it's just I can, I still, as I said, I still I've read Jamie's book a couple of times, and I've found out all the facts and, and watched documentaries on YouTube. There's actually a really good documentary on YouTube about it as well. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I watched it not long ago. But the fact that they spent so much money on this war when they could have easily just, you know, found an area what's not populated back there, you know, got all the emus in, set up a little bit of a, you know, feeding station. I think it would have cost a, a hell of a lot less than um, what the actual war cost itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like so it. there was only two attempts, but let, let, let's let's talk about what was most effective, Ryan. <laughs> um, <laughs> the army withdrew. The farmers kept asking for help. The government said, no, 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 no. <laughs> but then they, in, uh, they put out a bounty system. Yeah. So basically, kill a bird, get some money. And uh, I think it was 1934, within a six-month period, 57,000 emus were killed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <gasps> See? Yeah, so that's when um, when 1800 Pedro Pascal donned the, the mantle of the Mandalorian, went out and, took, and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some money on this bounty hunting thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, wow. Well, so yeah, the, the civilians did what the army couldn't. <laughs> Uh, that that never happens. The civilians can do what the government can't. That never happens in the world. I swear, it's so funny to hear that. And you know, like that's the, that's the one time that that's actually happened. Yeah. Uh, if you can hear the sarcasm in my voice, there, even in Australia, I can yeah. disagree with that statement. No, I can hear it. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's very it's a very very interesting story, and I, and I do encourage you. And you know, I'm not just saying this because he's my best mate, but to to. If listeners, if you if you're interested, pick up Jamie's book and he'll do the plug later. But it's a really good it's a really good read and it's got a lot of uh, you know pictures and and art that Jamie has requested design for the book. It's it's absolutely it's such a good read and you will be sitting there every chapter going huh? But it actually <laughs> did happen and it is it is it is a it is a historical event and you know. It'll probably reduce your opinion of Australians a little bit, but hey, you know, if it if it if it if it promotes Jamie as a good author, I'm happy with that. Oh, that's awesome. I'll take the hit. I'll take the hit. You know, if it's half as funny as you guys have been right now, oh, yeah. then it's definitely worth a read. If if it's only half as funny. So we will make sure to put a link in our show notes and we'll also let you plug the book uh, towards the end of the show as well. So you can let everybody know where they can find this book Sweet. as well. 
it's it's just something that you don't hear of. You know what I mean? Like it's something that you don't hear of very very often, and and that's why I think it's such an interesting topic. Um, as I said, there's documentaries on YouTube, Jamie's book, and I think there's a movie coming out. Yeah, you know, this year or next year or something. Oh wow! About the actual emu war, um, which I, Jamie knows a lot more about that than yeah. I do. But um, it's uh, John John Cleese, Rob Snyder, someone called Monty Franklin. I think he's an Aussie that lives in New York. Oh, cool. So beside the emu uh, casualties, were there any casualties in the army? No, <laughs> no. I, I, only nope. uh, what, what do you call it? dignity? Dignity was killed. Just the uh... dignity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Their pride. I wonder. I wonder, Jamie. I've never asked you this. Yeah, I've never asked you this question. Did did does that major get demoted at all because he couldn't beat the emus? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Um, I think I think they. If he did, they kind of scrubbed that from history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't blame them. Oh wow. Oh wow. Uh... Like, we don't talk about that anymore. There was there were some funny. Uh, it was really funny because there was uh, media from overseas saying they're killing the rare emu. <laughs> you know, like like you know, like all, all the save the animals. You know, there's there's twenty thousand of them. <laughs> it's just like they're so rare. It's we're not down to the last five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though there was a bounty system, now there's like seven hundred thousand emus in Australia. It's like oh my gosh oh they bounced back quick they're pre- they're preparing for the next <laughs> war they even took it. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> they're gonna have very smug faces they're getting their numbers and um you know they they they're bringing it, bring it all but you can't you can't go anywhere bush without seeing an emu to be honest with you and that's not just saying the Australian thing of you know we have kangaroos in our backyards and stuff but it's like you can emus are everywhere <laughs> Jamie literally don't have kangaroos because his backyards are forest. A national park, so he literally does have kangaroos in his backyard. That's so cool. That is oh, awesome. Wow. You are the, the the Australian stereotype made <laughs> made human. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> well, we're the Mexican stereotypes because we literally have tacos in our backyard, also. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot more attractive than here. So next time, when I, I'm coming over, I'll come to your place and go to your backyard then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ryan, Ryan dreams of staring at the window and seeing a Taco Bell. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've only, we've only yeah. just started getting Taco Bell here in Australia. I think we've got um, maybe 50 or something stores. They've just popped up in the last couple of years. So I'm finally mm. getting to enjoy the Taco Bell. You know, obviously yeah. we... You know, we make our own here at home too, but it's nice to actually know what the hype is about Taco Bell. I don't actually <laughs> mind it too much, but yeah, the Mexican pizza that when it went away, everybody's hearts were kind of broken. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's nice. To, it's yeah. nice to be able to sample the. Um, you know, we're getting more and more of the of the you know the the United States and 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 everywhere coming to Australia finally after many many years. So it's nice to to sample the foods of the world. Very cool. And then we, a lot of people like to think that um, Foster's is Australian for beer as the slogan goes, but it's not. I know. I'm like, no, No. don't be fooled. We're really not. It's not. (laughs) Yeah, we we, seriously, we don't, we don't, I've I've never had a, I I was, I used to, me and Jamie, not in the same, but we used to be in punk rock bands. So back when we were younger, we did our fair, Jamie never did, but I did my fair (laughs) share of drinking when I was a lot younger. I've never had a Foster's in my life, ever. Ever, even I would, I would rather drink, you know, a secondhand beer out of a shoe than drink a can of a brand new can of Foster's. Seriously, seriously, like it's just it's the most disgusting beer in the world. Dispelling all kinds of myths here, guys. Yes, oh, definitely. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. If you're saying that's the most disgusting beer in the world, you haven't tried Bud Light yet. No, I haven't. I haven't actually tried. I think that takes the cake. <laughs> if you get the chance, skip it for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, I have tried Budweiser because we do get that on the rare in the rare bottle shop over the very liquor shop over here. I have tried Budweiser; it's not bad. But um, yeah, never tried a Bud Light, so I'd have to. I'll keep an eye out. But if that can, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, no. I might, we might have to have a competition: Bud Light versus Foster's, and see which one's the worst. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm pretty sure Foster's is much better. <laughs> It's hard to top Bud Light uh, when it comes to bad flavor. They're the king of bad flavor. Oh, okay. All right. Well, look, I might stay away from it then. (laughs) Yes, that's wise. Yeah. But if you gentlemen do come to the States, I know that 
Isela and I have definitely sung the praises of Taco Bell <laughs> in more than one episode. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But there are much better tacos than okay. Taco Bell. Much better tacos. Oh, yeah, for sure. And especially here, because it's El Paso, Texas, it's really like, it's almost like Mexico, but you get to keep your rights. You know, you have the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's really lovely. So if you, it's like as close to being to Mexico without, you know, the, the whole uh, deadly warfare type yeah. of thing. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. Although we do, I, I think, probably have more mass shootings as a country. In the U.S. than in Mexico. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. You know how they're going to do the World Cup in North America? The European countries are telling the people that are coming over, it's fine if you go to Canada and it's fine if you go to Mexico. Don't go to the U.S. because of all the racism and mass shootings. I'm serious. Wow. I'm not lying. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Look, I um, <laughs> my 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 lovely wife, Stephanie, she, um, she is from Ireland, but she spent a lot of time in Canada. So she, she had a bit of an American-Canadian accent, and um, she told me a whole bunch. This was back in the 80s where, when she was young and living in the U.S., but I just I hate to say it. Like, I, I've done a lot of traveling in terms of Australia around here and, uh, like, New Zealand and, um, you know, the islands that we have around here, but I, I always wanted to because I'm a big, I'm a massive, massive, massive comic book nerd, so I always wanted to go to to Comic-Con in NYC or <laughs> I, I've heard stories. Jamie did advise me. Uh, yeah, I've always wanted to go to Comic-Con um, in San Diego or even New York now in the Java Center. But, um, yeah, I just uh, I, I suffer from really bad anxiety and um, mm. I just don't know if I could do it, to be honest with you, like with, with everything that happens and, and, you know, I just, it's... it's Well, honestly, California and New York would be fine because they're... They're pretty liberal states. Okay. You know, when you start going to the more conservative states, that's where you have to be a little little bit more cautious. But California and New York, they're very liberal. Okay. So you probably don't have anything to worry there. Yeah. And San Diego has good tacos there, too. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're right near the border, too, where Tijuana is. Yep. So they get, like, all the great food. Oh, nice. Cooks and everything, you know, are, are in that area. And I do, I do love my Coronas as well, so... I definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that another stereotype, or is that true? Is that is that like a, a a big bee down? Oh, in it's there? huge out here. Oh, good. It's huge out here for sure. Yeah, I've, it's like happy hour. It's like dollar Coronas. It's just like really cheap. I mean, they they go down, you know, well during the summer. They're so refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, that's Elena's husband's uh, favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's my husband's favorite beer. Oh, I'll keep that in mind. Well, if we ever do make it out for Comic Con, I will definitely have to put in a trip down to to your your neck of the woods for sure. Yes, or we can just all go to San Diego. I'm not just kidding. Yes, <laughs> if you make it down for Comic Con, we will join you guys. Oh, good, good. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. my dream. That's a bucket list thing for me is to go to Comic Con. I don't care if it's San Diego or New York, either one of the two. I want to go before I leave this world. So. <laughs> Definitely. We'll keep in touch and hopefully it won't be too far away for sure. Sweet. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm going to the weaker version here in Australia next next weekend called it's called, it's called Supernova. Yep. Oh nice. Oh, cool. But oh, it's cool. yeah, the lines are shorter and <laughs> you know, they they'd be much shorter. <laughs> oh really? Oh wow. But uh Jim Cummings is coming, if you know Jim Cummings who voices Winnie the Pooh and Oh my god, how cool. Tyler Tyler Hochin, the, the super Tyler Hochin from Superman and Lois. Oh, I love them. Yep. I'm very jealous. If I hadn't, if I hadn't just come out of hospital, I'd be going with them. But I said to Jamie, I said, I want you to, uh, I'll give you money. You get me Tyler Hoechlin, <laughs> a nice picture of Tyler Hoechlin with a nice Aww. blurb on there. He's my, one of my favorite Aww. actors. I used to watch him in Teen Wolf and then uh, when he became Superman <laughs> from, um, you know, in that universe, I just, I reckon Superman and Lois is one of the best DC shows on at the moment. So. Yeah. So good. Bar none. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. I love it. I, I never know that's the way that you pronounce his last name. I always just call him Tyler Hecklin, but mm -hmm. I was sure that I was mispronouncing it. I'm probably saying it wrong. I mispronounce people's <laughs> names all the time. And the thing we discovered <laughs> um, recently is we watched Air with- uh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to see that. The Ben Affleck and- uh, Yeah. And and we, we realized as Australians, countrywide, we've been pronouncing Adidas wrong. <laughs> oh no yeah okay how are you pronouncing it i think i heard you guys talk about that on, on a podcast yeah 
Yeah, I think it was the latest one, right? Yeah. We say Adidas. <laughs> yeah, we say Adidas. Adidas. Yeah, Adidas. Well, it's a it's a German, right? So yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well, and and, yeah. and I felt even worse because I'm a, I'm a I'm a huge metal fan, and I grew up on 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 the band Corn, and they had that song <laughs> Adidas, and I used to say, and even though they would sing it. <laughs> I still would call it Adidas, not Adidas. And so I feel even doubly, because they say in that movie, which is a great movie, they say Adidas about 150,000 times. So it's now drilled into our heads. And, you know, we, we it's, it's just, it's very interesting to find out the different way, because no one teaches you how to say words when you're young and you just keep saying them and saying them and saying them. Like with Henry Cavill, I say Cavill, but apparently it's Cavill. But I just, I, I still haven't changed the way that I say it. I just say it's Henry Cavill. I've always heard Henry Cavill. I thought it was Cavill also. I did, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then I get, I get corrected all the time. So I'm like, okay. Until he corrects you, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, until he comes to my house, <laughs> right. and corrects me. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it was just such a, such a crazy thing because Jamie watched it, and I was actually starting to watch it after he'd finished that movie. And um, he mentioned something in our group chat, and then I was watching it. I thought, oh, wow, there you go. It's just crazy. And then we, we ended up doing an author interview with uh, a gentleman from the States last week, and I think we spent about half an hour just talking about mispronunciations of words. <laughs> I felt it was a – it turned from an author interview to the literary podcast or something like that. So it was crazy. I, I- – I heard you guys on one of your podcasts and you guys were saying how you hate when Americans and I I've heard yeah. this too when when we say we say Aussie with like an S. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's really pronounced almost like with Z's. It's like Aussie Osborne. That's how we say it. So huh? that's the that's the example we used um when we did that interview. Uh because yeah, I because I'm a I'm a massive wrestling fan, right? So Oh gosh, you're like Jose yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Jose in Australia. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. You now have your, your doppelganger. You you grow a much better beard than I do, though. I, I grew this while I was in hospital, but your beard is much more nice and I need to work on that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I because there's a lot more Australians coming up through the ranks in, in wrestling at the moment, I, I hate when the commentators are like the Aussie, 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 and I'm like, I want to throw yeah. something at the yeah. TV. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's just wow. And Americans are supposed to be the violent ones. <laughs> oh no, I'm kidding. Oh okay. no, go back to colonial Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, yeah, I'm trying to correct the world. It's like one person at a time. So Yeah, one one word at a time. <laughs> exactly. I just say people think the god of metal, Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Black Sabbath, Perfect. Ozzy Osbourne. That's how we say it, Ozzy. So there you go. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> now it's locked in. <laughs> Going back to mispronunciations and the metal, I don't know if you're familiar with Jeff Tate from Queensryche. Uh, no, I'm not actually. Okay, well, they do have a, a great album called Operation Mindcrime. Okay. I recommend that you check it out. Yeah. It's kind of like um, a concept album. It's it's metal, but it's really progressive. It's, it's really cool. Okay. But the way that he spells his name is G-E-O-F-F. -F. So I always grew up calling him Geoff Tate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I've been corrected a million times. It's not Geoff Tate. It's Jeff Tate. But again, oh, wow. yeah. I can't stop pronouncing it yeah. G off tape. And, and do, you know, do you know what's funny, Jose? 90% of the Jeffs that are in Australia spell it that way. So if I saw it, I would have seen, oh, it's Jeff. Like we hardly have anyone spell it J-E-F-F. A lot of people in Australia spell it G-E-O-F-F. So that's that's crazy. Yeah, there you go. So That's funny. That's it. If, if I ever see someone that's who funny. spells it J-E-F-F, -F, I'm going to call him Jeff. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, but they, it's it's just crazy. like I find it so interesting. On you know, you could grow up one way saying a word, and then meet one person, and then they say it a completely different word. Because if you actually say the words as this as it looks, half the time it doesn't even make sense. You know, sound <laughs> like what it looks like. Right. Yeah. It's right. insane. There's, yeah. a, there's a guy on Instagram that I follow. He does he does that a lot. He goes over different words and, and sounds and stuff like that. And it's just, it's uh, maybe it's my old, I'm getting older, but I kind of get interested by that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I remember uh, teaching my mom English and 
when we were going through like those weird silent letters of like the K and knife and stuff like that. Yep. She's like, well, then why is it there? (laughs) I don't know what to do. I was really young too. So I was like, I don't know. This is just what my teacher told me. (laughs) And then, and then the the pronunciation uh, part was like always funny because when she would say the word like like a sheet of paper mm-hmm. with like S H double E T, it sounded like she was saying shit, <laughs> uh, like a shit of paper. <laughs> and then one of my friends, we were walking out of school together, and um, this was second grade, and her mom was named Peggy, but. And unfortunately, you know, she was overweight, the mom, and my mom would always, it sounded like she was calling her Piggy. (laughs) I was like, oh my God, it was so sad. And my mom was like, oh, she's so nice. And (laughs) I'm like, why doesn't she talk to me anymore? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And then my friend, I was like, God, why doesn't she talk to me anymore? My friend. (laughs) But yeah, I, I I can understand that. Like, you can understand why people who don't grow up with English as a first language have so much trouble struggling with it because half of our words don't make sense. (laughs) Yes, yeah. It's a hard language. Yeah, it really is. And you don't (laughs) think about that because, you know, people like myself and I grew up with English as a first language because my background is English and Scottish. So, you know, there's even though Scottish sometimes is hard to understand, they do, I swear, still speak English. Um, But it's just, (laughs) you know, coming from that background and then I can... Um, because Australia is a very multicultural country, we have a lot of different yeah. um, people that immigrate over here, like from from New Zealand, from India, from Tasmania, Philippines, from Vietnam, from everywhere. Yeah, Tasman- yeah Tasmania. <laughs> they're, they're, a, they're a weird bunch, that Tasmanian group. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I can understand why they have so much trouble because uh, I really feel for them because I don't even understand some of the words in the English language and, and, and why they're spelt the way that they're spelt and they sound the way that they sound. It's insane. Yeah, 100%. I've just turned your podcast into the literary podcast, so I apologize for that. <laughs> One podcast at a time. Uh- <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, we always love to go on tangents. Yeah. And before yeah. we go on the next tangent, yeah. let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break, and then uh, we'll go ahead and go on some more tangents. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Twisted Humans. Do you find yourself wanting to know more about the latest murder, conspiracy, cult, or haunting? Then this is the podcast for you. In 1952, there was a record high of UFOs reported. 1,500 sightings. There has been evidence of human sacrifice, devil worship, and it is haunted by more spirits than can be counted. A family of two adults and two kids reportedly saw a giant flying thing with glowing red eyes. And meanwhile, the family's nanny that helped Veronica to care for her and Lucian's children was found bludgeoned to death in the basement of their family home. I'm Alicia. And I'm Sierra. And this is Twisted Twisted and and Uncorked. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Up All Night, an Are You Afraid of the Dark podcast. We're your hosts. My name's Cortland. And I'm Brandon. And in our podcast, we take apart each episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, scene by scene, and discuss it in detail. This show is prime early 90s Canadian acting at its best, or in some cases worst. We're here to laugh our way through seven seasons and 91 episodes. So whether you're a fan of the show, Dink, the boo, boo, boo. That's hard dough. No mister, accent on the dough. <laughs> Won't you come play with me? Hey, we're just having a goof. Or experiencing it for the first time. We know there's nothing better than staying up all night with a scary story. And we're back. We're back. Before we we go, gentlemen, Jamie... If you wanted to tell us a little bit more about your book, let us know where we could purchase that and um, any final thoughts you wanted to share with us. Yeah, cool. Um, well, my book is called Letters from the Emu or it is on Amazon, um, but I, I have a few people that have said it's hard to get overseas, so you might have to get an ebook until we sort out overshipping because I think shipping overseas is pretty expensive at the moment. 
but it is a book written from the perspective of the uh, of those that won the war. So it's all imagining emus writing letters to their loved ones and. <laughs> oh my god, that's so great! <laughs> yeah, there is a whole terminology like they call the enemy short necks. Um, you know, for you know, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, you know. So it's got that that camaraderie. It is uh, the publisher I went with. They tweaked it a little bit, so it's it's kids book. So it's I think they said eight to ten, eight to twelve year olds. But I've written it in such a way that it's it's almost like a Pixar movie. So there's plenty of stuff in there that the adults will get a good chuckle at, and the kids will be like, "What?" <laughs> you know, okay. like like it, it really is a, a book for for everyone. But it's filled with articles, art. I actually made my own newspaper called the Daily Mob because a group of emus are called a mob, and so it's. They've got their they've got oh their God, own cool. newspaper and like it's 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 very funny. I had a lot of fun oh, fun, fun doing it, but it basically just tells you the series of events that happened through the eyes of an emu. And yeah, it's been doing really well. Uh, just had my book launch the other week, and uh, that uh, made a fair fair bit of moala. Uh, I think I think you guys call it, you know. So um, good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And you can check. I got a website, jabryden uh, dot com again. Jay Brighton on Instagram, and you can find stories that you're fictional on you know all the podcast podcast platforms, but um, also stories underscore podcast on Instagram. But um, Ryan, do you want to say any words? Um, look, I think you've said it all. I don't, I don't have anything to plug. I'm not a distinguished author like Jamie. Um, but um, no, I just want to say a big thanks to you guys for having us mm-hmm. on here. It's, it's actually been really, really fun. I do get very shy and I've found that I was able to open up quite quite quickly to you guys uh, and that's a sign of a good conversation and a good time. So I just want to say thanks for taking the time to have us on and, and it's been an absolutely fantastic chat. So I really appreciate it and, and hopefully we can do it again soon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for your time as well. Not a bit. I mean, it's it's still morning time here. I'm just I'm confined to a chair anyway, so it's either you, all you're doing is taking me away from the new Star Wars Force Awake uh, Survivor game that I borrowed off Jamie. So don't. It, it, this has been much more entertaining. So I appreciate that. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Good. But yeah, thank you very much for having us on. No, it's been a total pleasure. And yeah, hopefully we can do this again Definitely. soon. Definitely had a lot of fun. My mouth hurts from yeah. laughing because I don't think I've laughed yeah. this hard in a very long time. Yeah, that's what we're all about. Yeah. We just want people to have fun. Like we're not in it for the money. We're not in it for, you know. I don't care if a hundred people or one person listens to it. I just want to make people laugh because the world is it's a very dark place. And and I'm as if you get to know me, I'm a really positive person. So I want people to laugh. I want people to have fun. And with the the interviews we do with authors. It's all about just getting more eyes on their books. You know, I want, I want nothing. I'm a massive reader, have been all my life, and I want people to get, to be successful, you know, and, and I'm very black and white. If I don't like something, I'm not going to praise it. And I don't think I've had a book from an author. I, mean, I think we've done about 50 authors, Jamie, I think. No, it's 30, 30 odd, I think. Yeah. And, and I've, I have literally bought all of their books and read them <laughs> and, you know, like it's, we we change. We should change the name of the podcast to "Selling Books to Ryan" because that's how. That's literally what happened. <laughs> they talk about the book, and then and then I'm on my phone. And I'm like, well, "What are you doing? I'm buying your buddy book." Um, you know, because we, that's what we want to do. So, and that's why I think we come across as you know, we have a bit of a laugh, but you know, we we just want the best for everyone, and we want to make people laugh and smile and take you away from the real world for a little while. You know, right. I think that's what life's about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And even exposing amazing stories like the emu war. <laughs> like that's amazing. And I'm definitely I would definitely want to buy the book even just for my daughter because next year she's gonna take world history. How great would this be for her to make a whole book report on it or something? Yeah, there you go. Get get more eyes on the emu war. And especially with the movie coming out in in a yeah. year or two, everyone's gonna be talking about it and Jamie's book sales are gonna go through the roof. Heck yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, he's like speak it into existence. <laughs> well, maybe when the movie comes out, we can have you guys again. Come on and maybe we can review the movie together. Yes, yes, let's do that. Oh, <gasps> Dudes, I'm down. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. I think that'd be great. You got you guys did uh, Velocipasta, didn't you? We did. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you, you made it further than we did. <laughs> I couldn't finish oh, yeah. it. 
<laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, like the whole, the, I, all I remember from that movie is the fact when, <laughs> in the very early when he walks out of the church and the, the parents' cars explode and all it says is car explosion <laughs> and there wasn't actually an explosion. <laughs> and then the paper mache Raptor was just a fantastic. Uh, and, ni- and throw in a couple of ninjas too. Why not? You know, like. Wow! Why right not? Uh, oh, yeah. that 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 was so bad. It was good. Um, I want a sequel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's lots of pasta too. Yeah. Well, you're in luck because they are making a sequel. Yeah. Excellent. Oh my lord, help us! Excellent. I can't wait. It'll probably have Arnold Schwarzenegger or something in it this time. So there you go. We can only hope. Get a studio oh back and behind it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, we'll definitely get back together and we'll talk about the movie when it comes out. Sounds good. Sweet. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. Well, on that high note, we hope that you enjoyed the show and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. Yeah. <laughs> Follow us on the socials at GreetingsTAC, email us at GreetingsTAC at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 915 317 Sixty-six, sixty-nine. If you have a story to share with us about emails, <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you.